Flak 88 is one of the iconic artillery pieces that has a good reputation as a highly accurate and powerful weapon in terms of destructive capability. This weapon symbolizes the excellence of German artillery on the world stage. Flak 88 has a highly acclaimed reputation on the battlefield and has proven to be a serious threat to its adversaries. The name, Flak, refers to a series of related cannons, with the first official model being called the 8.8 cm Flak 18, which was later improved to the 8.8 cm Flak 36, and then the 8.8 cm Flak 37. Flak is an abbreviation for Flugabwerkenung, which in German means anti aircraft gun. After Germany's defeat in World War I, the Versailles Treaty prohibited Germany from developing many technologies, including cannons and anti aircraft weapons. However, behind the silence of the Versailles Treaty, the Krupp company secretly began to collaborate with other weapon manufacturers in Europe to produce a new anti aircraft cannon that could change the game. During the 1920s, Krupp partnered with the Swedish weapon manufacturer Boffers. In fact, Krupp was known to own about one-third of Boffer's shares. In September 1928, Krupp was informed that the army wanted a new anti-aircraft cannon. This cannon was required to be able to fire a 10 kg projectile at a muzzle velocity of 850 meters per second. However, a few years later, these requirements were slightly changed with the addition of new demands such as a firing rate between 15 and 20 rounds per minute muzzle velocities between 800 and 900 meters per second, and a change in caliber usage from 7.5 centimeters to 8.8 centimeters. It should be noted that the development of this cannon had already been carried out by Krupp and Rheinmetall factories at the end of World War I, although the weapon could be considered not very effective at that time. Going back to the beginning, after the Krupp engineers stationed at the Boffers company in Sweden had been working on a new anti-aircraft cannon for some time, in 1931, Krupp engineers returned to Germany where they secretly began building the cannon. After a series of tests in late September 1932, the Flak 18 achieved satisfactory results, and the number 18 was actually intended to mislead France and England into assuming that the weapon was an old design. As the Nazis began to demonstrate their power, they wanted to test the strength of their weapons before starting World War II. In 1936, Francisco Franco sent a request to Adolf Hitler for military equipment aid from Germany to fight against the loyalist forces in the Spanish Civil War, who were supported by the Soviet Union. In late July 1936, six He 51 aircraft and 20 Ju 57 were secretly transported to Spain. One of the aids sent by Germany was the Flak 18. This cannon was deployed in the Spanish Civil War and achieved satisfactory results. As we know, the Flak 18 was initially an anti aircraft weapon, but in Spain, it was used in various roles, including as artillery and anti tank gun, due to the lack of artillery among the nationalist forces and the overall low capabilities of the Spanish gun crews. Its outstanding performance in countering two Soviet T. 26 tanks during the Spanish Civil War. In 1938 led to the Heerswaffenamt request to use the 8.8 cm Flak 18 to attack ground targets. The performance was considered satisfactory in terms of range and firepower, leading some German officers like General Ludwig Ritter von Eimansberger to recommend its use in the anti-tank role. Although the Flak 18 is considered a good design, there is room for improvement. The gun itself did not require many modifications. However, the gun platform underwent some modifications to improve stability during firing and simplify production. Some changes made include altering the gun emplacement from an octagonal shape to a simpler square shape. Due to the high firing rate, anti-aircraft guns often required barrel replacement due to rapid wear. To facilitate quick replacement, Germany introduced a new three-part barrel. It consisted of a breech section, a middle section, and a muzzle section. This made it easier to replace worn-out sections and allowed different metals to be used in different components. Despite these changes, the overall performance of the Flak 18 and Flak 36 remained the same. 
the FLAC 36 was officially adopted on February 8, 1939. According to T. L. Gents and H. L. Doyle, in 1942, an improved model of the 88mm FLAC was introduced, known as the FLAC 37 8.8 cm. On the other hand, J. Ledwock argues that the FLAC 37 was introduced in 1937. Visually, this model is similar to the previous FLAC 36 model. The difference is that this model was specifically designed for better anti-aircraft performance and equipped with a specially designed aiming dial. When used in this mode, the FLAC 37 cannot be used in an anti-tank role. The last change in this series was the reintroduction of the two-part barrel design. Despite these improvements, the overall performance remained the same as the previous model. The FLAC 36 37 was slightly heavier in the firing configuration, weighing around 5,300 kg, with a total weight of 8,200 kg. After March 1943, only the FLAC 37 would be produced, completely replacing the older models. In addition to the Spanish Civil War, the FLAC 88 was also used during the Polish Campaign, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and other theatres of war. The African theatre of war may be the most famous place for the 8.8 cm anti-tank gun during the war. At that time, Germany was preparing its combat capabilities against England, and Hitler sent Erwin Rummel to lead the Afrika Corps in North Africa after Italy's failed attempt to conquer Egypt in 1940. During Operation Battleaxe, which began on June 15, 1941, German 8.8 cm guns caused many casualties on the British side, including the destruction of 90 tanks. The battle on November 21 against the British near Beer en Bedad brought good news for the Germans, as the 8.8 cm gun successfully defeated four Mk4 cruiser tanks using 35 anti tank rounds, and the next day, six Mk4 cruiser tanks were destroyed. On November 23, Two 8.8 cm flak guns were used to support the advance of German tank forces near Elladum. The enemy forces were pushed back with the loss of four tanks and about 20 trucks. According to information, from 1933 to 1945, a total of 19,650 units of flak 88 artillery were produced, although other sources claim that a total of 20,754 units were produced. Additionally, derivatives of the FLAC 88 were used as the main armament of Tiger tanks. With strong armor and excellent firepower, this tank became feared by those who had to face it. Now let's discuss how effective the FLAC 88 was on the battlefield. One key focus area was mobility, and therefore, an important part of the FLAC was the Sonderanhanger 202. Although there were also versions that were placed on the ground with four supports, it should be noted that the flak could also be fired from a trailer if necessary, but only at low angles, primarily against ground targets. Although the flak 88 had advantages in accuracy, rate of fire, and high penetrating power, it cannot be said to be a one-shot, one-kill weapon. According to battle reports on the Eastern Front, out of a total of 117 8.8cm PZGR rounds used to disable 4KW1, and 8T-34 tanks, an average of 10 rounds were needed to destroy one tank. In the North African front, within a month from November 19 to December 15, 1941, 54 tanks were claimed to be destroyed using 613 PZGR rounds, with an average of 11 rounds per tank. Additionally, a drawback of the 88mm cannon was its relatively large size making it easily visible and requiring a considerable amount of time to relocate. Another factor that contributed to its success was the maximum training of the crews. As the skill level of the AA gun crews was highly regarded. From the beginning, Germany recognized the nature of AA weapons and the type of crew needed to operate them, making them well suited for anti-tank work. To fulfill this function, AA gun crews needed to be better trained than most and capable of responding quickly to changes in tactical situations. Through this training, personnel were simultaneously trained to think and operate in an anti-aircraft, anti-tank, and anti-personnel manner. Although newer anti-tank weapons, 
such as the 17-pounder Sherman Firefly or the Soviet 100mm Model 1944, were technically as good or even better than the German 88, it is difficult to argue against the devastating effect the 88 had in 1941 in the Western Desert, or the fact that it was the only weapon known to be able to stop the advance of Soviet T-34 and KV-1 tanks. Despite Germany's best efforts, the effectiveness of the flak significantly declined by late 1944. The reason was the lack of well-trained crews. At the beginning of the war, Germany placed great emphasis on crew training, which lasted several months. As the flak guns were needed on the front lines, inexperienced and less trained personnel had to be used instead. In the final stages of the war, these crews received only a few weeks of training, which was not sufficient for the tasks they had to perform. Beside that, Allied bombing raids eventually impacted German industry, significantly reducing ammunition production, which was one of the main reasons why German anti-aircraft defense ultimately failed. Thank you for watching this video. If there are any errors in the information provided, please discuss it in the comments. Once again, thank you and see you later.